The Splatoon community has a lot of Discord servers, but one that I'm going to be primarily focusing on for the moment here is the one called the Incademy. This server hosts a lot of channels for various things about the game, where you can talk about just about anything in a social channel, or you can even talk about competitive aspects of the game. But for this video, we're going to primarily focus on the fact that it has channels for weapon-specific discussion, and as one would imagine, I often look in the channel that's used for the brushes. And what often comes up in this channel is gear and what abilities you should use, something that's almost always debated every day, and there's a lot of varying opinions on what should and shouldn't be used. And I often see so many people recommending things that I wouldn't personally recommend, and so instead of having to go back and correct people every time, as that's probably too much time, I'm going to instead make a video that people have been actually asking me for for a while. So today I'm actually going to be talking about abilities you should use on the Octobrush, what you shouldn't use on the Octobrush, and explaining my builds. And this is something, like I said, has been asked for for quite some time. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Let's first start off with something you should never incorporate into your builds, and it's because it's actually worthless. And that's run speed up. It's actually been debated for several years, believe it or not, that run speed up actually affects the roll speed of the brushes. And believe it or not, it doesn't. It never has, and it probably never will. It doesn't even affect the roll speed of the rollers. This sort of idea of this affecting it actually comes from old discussions prior to Splatoon's release after the test fire and people were discussing the abilities as we were shown off some of them around that time and people were expecting run speed up to make the rollers faster. This wasn't the case, this isn't the case, but every so often I see people recommend run speed up for whatever reason. There are some uses of it, primarily for spots like Camp Triggerfish Rainmaker where you have to walk across the netting sometimes. However, I feel like you are probably not going to or want to use this ability for one specific situation like that. You probably shouldn't be the person carrying the Rainmaker, or maybe you will be, but however, it's not worth incorporating an ability that is primarily useless to your weapon into your build for something so situational like that. Next up, I want to talk about something that I would consider version exclusive abilities that you should use. Depending on the type of Octobrush you're using, you would want to avoid using certain abilities or you'd want to primarily use certain abilities and it does in fact have a big thing to do with the kit that the weapons have. So the big thing that I would have primarily focused for the vanilla Octobrush is Sub Saver or Ink Saver Sub and that's because of the auto bomb. You wouldn't want to really use it on the Octobrush Nouveau as there's no point into using Sub Saver for beacons as it actually already has a pretty quick ink recovery rate after placing one so even if you place a beacon, you're probably going to have enough ink back immediately, and it also doesn't really even cost that much. So it's not something I would expect someone to use on the Nouveau, and it's not something I personally would use on the Octobrush Nouveau. But it is something that you should consider at least somewhat of for the vanilla, and the amount of which will be discussed later in this video. As for Nouveau exclusive, I think that you should be using Sub Power Up. And the reason for that is Sub Power Up actually makes your beacons better. It allows your teammates to have an increased jump speed to your beacons. As for the vanilla Octobrush, what it does is it makes you throw auto bombs farther. And while I don't really recommend it for the vanilla Octobrush, the reason is is that the auto bomb already has a pretty large detect rate, and so it doesn't really need to have sub power up as it pretty much covers a large radius. And so even if you don't throw it very far, that large detect radius is still going to cover a massive amount of space itself. And for those of you that might be wondering about the use of sub power up versus quick super jump, I've actually done it some testing on these numbers a bit back and the jump time is actually the same for both abilities. So you should really be using sub power up if you're using the Octobrush Nouveau instead of quick super jump. That way you can give the jump speed benefit to your entire team and it's not just you that's doing it. The speeds are exactly the same, so why not just give it to your entire team? Next up, let's talk about main exclusive abilities. These are abilities that are only appear in the main slot of gear, and so they have a very limited use as, well, you can't really stack it. So how useful are these abilities? Well, first off, let's talk about the headgear. The abilities are Comeback, Last Ditch Effort, Open and Gambit, and Tenacity. Now, Comeback was something that was primarily used a lot in Splatoon 1, and it's because it provides a boost upon respawning. And for those that don't know, at the end of Splatoon 1, the meta pretty much shifted around dying a lot, so Comeback pretty much gave you a non-stop boost to your abilities. 
But nevertheless, the focus on dying has sort of simmered down a bit in the sequel. However, comeback still does provide a decent amount of boost to, upon respawn, and it is something that is at least somewhat decent to use. Because you're playing a short-ranged weapon in the Octobrush, and almost everything in the game that's used right now is a long-range or a mid-range, chances are you're going to die a fair amount, so comeback is actually a relatively decent choice for the weapon. Now these next two, Last Ditch Effort and Opening Gambit, are both two abilities that I don't really see any use in using. They have a very limited window of use, and after that they're just not really useful. They're, it's just taking up a slot in your abilities that doesn't really get used as much as anything else. Granted, Comeback is only active when you respawn, however, there's a chance that you're going to die at least more than once in the game. However, Last Ditch Effort and Opening Gambit have very limited windows of usage. Last Ditch Effort only activates either in the last 30 seconds of the match or if the score in a game gets below 30. It's not that ex it's not that useful. I mean, if you have to spend four and a half minutes not having a main to be able to get something use out of it, then it's not the greatest. Opening Gambit is only the first 30 seconds of a match, and while it was just recently changed to where if you get an assist or a kill, the duration continues, that's still not really that useful, and it's, it, you basically have to keep up with assists or kills throughout the duration to keep the boost to it. It's just not something that I see useful at all. Both of these are just not very useful because of their limited windows. And like I said, comeback does have a limited window as well, but there's a chance you're going to die a decent amount of times in a match. So you'll end up with more than 30 seconds of use. The last main for the headgear is tenacity. And tenacity boosts your special when you are surviving while your teammates are down. This is not exactly that useful in this game as it was in the first game. In the first Splatoon, I would often use Tenacity on the Vanilla Octobrush, so I would charge my Kraken while my teammates died. The reason it's not useful now isn't because there's no Kraken anymore, but because the specials on both Octobrushes aren't exactly something that you would really want to have in a pinch like that. It's not something you should really be bothering to have after your teammates die. They're useful, Inkjet is still a relatively decent special, Ten of Missiles are still pretty meh, but it's not like something you would want to have as a defense when your teammates die. Inkjet can be decent if you're able to land your shots, but the main reason why I did it in Splatoon 1 is because if my teammates were down, I would charge a Kraken that would use to keep me alive when an enemy team would push up to where I was at. It's a defense, and so having tenacity on something with inkjet and tenor missiles isn't exactly the greatest and not really going to benefit much from it so i actually don't really recommend tenacity on this weapon in fact in general i don't really think tenacity is all that great in this game it's useful for backliner weapons with stingray but that's pretty much it there's no other use for it as a lot of the specials in this game are very underwhelming so they don't really there's just no point, honestly. Now let's talk about normal clothing main abilities. We have Ability Doubler, which is exclusive to Splatfest, so I'm not really going to bother talking about it here. We have Haunt, Ninja Squid, Respawn Punisher, and Thermal Ink. So what Haunt does is it allows you to see the person that kills you last. In Splatoon 1, it would mark the opponent that killed you last and would make it visible to everyone on your team. Now, Haunt really isn't even that useful. It's sort of a shame but it really doesn't have that much use anymore because one thing that it provided very well in the first game was a mark to everyone on your team. Now it is only visible to you. That doesn't really make it too useful for your team. It allows you to provide information if you're playing with a team you can tell them where the person that last killed you is but in Splatoon 1 it made it very obvious and so now because it doesn't really do too much there's not really any point in running it. That's why you don't really see it anymore, it's, it's just in general not good, and I do not recommend using it. Now Ninja Squid is a hot button topic. There's a lot of people that say it's good for Octobrush, there's a lot of people that say it's bad for it, but it primarily depends on how you play. This weapon is very good at sharking and you know capitalizing on people that make mistakes, and it's just something that you want to have you know move around or sit still a lot, depending on how you play. Ninja Squid is something that makes it to where your ripples in the ink are less visible while you're swimming. It's not entirely impossible to be spotted. You can still be seen as they've actually made the ripples through in Ninja Squid a lot more visible in this game as opposed to the last one. 
but it's just something that you can use to sort of hide a little bit better. It's not something I use, mainly because I don't really like the nerf to the swim speed. And yes, that can be corrected by just using swim speed on top of it. I don't really care too much for it, and I've actually found that a lot of higher level players have actually noticed the ripples in the ink more closely, and so getting away with Ninja Squid isn't too easy anymore, especially if you follow certain like trends with it. It's a lot easier to be spotted if you repeat certain trends. Like if you see a roller throw a curling bomb, chances are they're using their Ninja Squid to follow the trail from the curling bomb. While the Octobrush obviously doesn't have that, it's still very obvious when you're going to do stuff like advance. If you throw an auto bomb and explodes, chances are most people would follow where the ink was placed. And so a lot of higher level players have learned to watch for things like that. So it's a lot harder to get away with Ninja Squid, but when it does, it's useful. When it's not, then you're just like, you use an ability for something that's going to be spotted out anyway. So it's something you would have to sort of shift your playstyle around if you're using it. So it's not really something I care personally to use. Again, it's something that is useful depending on your playstyle. If you shift your position around a lot and you, you know, you're careful about mixing up your things and your actions when you, you know, when you're playing so you're not repetitive and you're not predictable, then it can be useful. So there is some value into it and I would definitely recommend it to be, you know, if you're to mess with it, see how it works for you. It is something that is in fact useful and it's probably one of the better main abilities that is exclusive that you can use on it. It's not something, like I said, that I use, but it is something that is pretty useful. Next up is Respawn Punisher, and this one's sort of odd as a lot of people are still sort of, they don't really quite understand how it works. Respawn Punisher is basically a counteract to quick respawn. If you kill someone while you're wearing Respawn Punisher, it takes them longer to respawn. The downside is if you die, you also take longer to respawn. So it's sort of like this thing where you want to wear it if you're a, a slayer. If you can get more kills than you die, then it's very good for you. And to a degree, that's good for an Octobrush, as a good Octobrush player would be killing more than they die. However, there's going to be those situations where you're just going to die and die and die. If a team has a comp that's just so much better than yours, or you keep getting into engagements with something that has more range, or someone that knows their spacing well, then chances are you're going to repeatedly die. And something like this that increases your respawn time, it's not exactly useful for you. So this is a very mixed one. It's something that's useful if you're in a good situation, but in, it's just bad for you if you're in a bad situation. And you can't really predict that going into a match with, like, in Solar Ranked or Turf War or whatever. You can't predict if this is going to be an easy match for you or if it's going to be a bad one for you. So I personally feel like for Octobrush, Respawn Punisher just isn't worth it at all. And now the last main for clothing is Thermal Ink. And what Thermal Ink does is when you output ink, if it hits somebody and then you get a certain distance away, you can see where they're at through a sort of like infrared system, basically. You can see the outline of someone that you've hit with your ink. And you would think this isn't really useful as a close range weapon. Chances are you're going to hit somebody and then notice they're there and kill them. So what's the point of having something that shows you where someone is if you've hit them previously? And I've actually messed with this a decent amount myself on larger maps. There's a lot of maps where you're going to just be raining down ink to sort of cover the map. You know, if you're not essentially going for kills, you're just covering the ground. And a lot of the larger maps like uh, Sturgeon Shipyard or Humpback Pump Track, if you're just swinging to cover ground, chances are you're going to hit somebody eventually. And it's maps like that where you could you could feasibly see some use for it. You would have that, you know, you're just outputting ink to output ink and not necessarily to hit somebody. But say you end up doing it anyway and you don't even realize it. Well, now you have an outline of someone that you hit without realizing it. It's not the most useful. And like I said, it's primarily better for larger maps. It's not really, it's, it's not the best, but it's also not completely worthless on this weapon. Smaller maps, yes, because you're primarily going to kill just about anyone you're already swinging at. Bigger maps, it has some use because you're probably just going to be turfing to turf and you may end up hitting somebody. So I would at least consider this something to look into for larger maps, but not at all necessary. And now the final section, shoe exclusive mains. We have Drop Roller, Object Shredder, and Stealth Jump. Now, first off, Drop Roller, I think, is something that you should use on the Vanilla Octobrush. And... 
it's something I've started using a lot myself. And the reason being is Drop Roller provides a, a directional movement when you land from a super jump or, in this case, an inkjet. When you return to your inkjet marker, you can hold a direction and roll when you land. It's something people thought you could only do from a super jump, however, it does affect inkjet as well. And this is actually something very big. It doesn't sound like it's too big of a deal to be able to move when you land, as you could probably just land and hold ZL to move anyway. However, there's going to be times where people will camp your jump marker. This happens a lot, especially in higher level games. There will be people that will shark where you're landing. So even if you think you're in a relatively safe spot when you use your inkjet, chances are there's going to be someone that finds it and is preparing to shoot you when you land. This allows you to have directional movement upon landing so you can dodge out of the way of the shots. This is actually something very important to this weapon and to be able to capitalize on someone that's camping your jump like that is pretty big. So if you use it and you use your inkjet and you're, you're falling back down and you see someone shooting at your marker, you can hold a direction to roll out of the shots and then follow it up by swinging at them and killing them. You can easily counter people that are camping your jump and it's just something that I personally think is pretty important for not only the Octobrush but just about any inkjet weapon. This is something that it's it's becoming increasingly common for people to camp the markers like that. Just about any time someone will see an inkjet, they will look for where the landing is. And certain teams will even call out for the landing marker. So it has become increasingly useful to have something like this to give yourself an upper hand on someone that's trying to get the upper hand on you. So I definitely recommend using Drop Roller for not only the Octobrush, but any inkjet weapon. Now, Object Shredder is an interesting one. This is something that I've been asked a lot by various people saying that I should be using it or should they be using it. And I'm just going to start out by saying no. Object Shredder is completely worthless on the Octobrush. And the reason being is the primary uses for Object Shredder are primarily for Ink Armor or for Bubble Blower. Now, Ink Armor is something that will break after taking more than 30 damage. So if a weapon does more than 30 base damage, there's no point in using Object Shredder. And the Octobrush has a primary base damage of above 30. And you're most likely going to do the 40 damage hit from, the, you know, its normal range. So using Object Shredder on something that already does higher than 30 damage to break Ink Armor is completely worthless because you're already going to break it with one swing. As for bubble blowers, yeah, it's kind of useful, but if you have to get close to a bubble blower and to swing at the bubbles themselves, it's actually already really dangerous for you. Melee weapons like rollers and brushes should be running away from the bubbles and not actually chasing them down to break them. A lot, a lot of the times more recently, people have actually gone and you will use them and immediately try to pop them with bombs. And so trying to contest that now is a death sentence. So I actually do not even recommend trying to engage bubbles if you're an Octobrush or even if you're a roller. Just anything that's close range like that shouldn't be trying to break the bubbles as you're probably going to get out damaged pretty quickly. And the Octobrush and even the Inkbrush don't even do that good of a job at breaking them anyway, even with Object Shredder. So it's not even useful for that. And then some people have even brought up what if you're trying to break beacons. Well, uh, sorry to tell you, but even that's useless on this. Actually, a lot of people didn't even know this in the first game, and I even pointed it out in my old Octobrush guide. The Octobrush and even the Inkbrush can crush a beacon in one hit by rolling over it. Don't flick at beacons, just roll it over. And that's still the case in this game. Without Object Shredder, you can roll over a beacon and break it in one hit. So there is actually no usefulness to Object Shredder on the Octobrush or even the Ink Brush. And last up is Stealth Jump, and it's one of those ones that was very common at the end of Splatoon 1. Now it's sort of mixed in usefulness. It's, it's not as good as it was, however it still has some benefits to it, and now it doesn't have the nerf jump speed. Now it makes it to where if an enemy is within certain range of you, they will see your jump marker still. So it's useful for jumping to backliners or jumping to someone that's relatively safe in the middle of the map. It's no longer useful for jumping to someone that's in the enemy spawn or up in the enemy face. It's now just sort of useful for getting safely back into your backliners or to someone that's closer to your side of the map rather than having to swim back. You can safely jump in and hope that no one of the enemy team is close enough to even see your marker. It's got just sort of mixed usefulness, and it's not really something I care to use myself. In fact, like I mentioned earlier, I use Drop Roller primarily, so even 
that like drop roller is more useful for the octobrush i feel so it's something i use instead of stealth jump if there's a chance where you're jumping and it's no longer safe and you see someone shooting at your jump marker drop roller will allow you to move in a direction upon landing to avoid the shots if you're using stealth jump and your marker gets found then you're just going to get camped and when you land you'll probably just die immediately so at least with drop roller you can have some directional influence and potentially get away from danger like that so I don't personally think stealth jump is all that useful on the brushes and you're much better off using drop roller instead. Now, moving away from the main exclusive stuff, I want to primarily focus on two abilities as these are ones that are commonly brought up as which you should use. And that is Ink Saver Main and Ink Saver Sub. These are something that is very commonly brought up when talking about Octobrush builds and even dates way back to the first game as people try to figure out which is more useful. Now. Personally, I don't really use too much of either, and in fact, I use a lot of ink recovery up, and I'll go into a little bit of detail about that in a bit. However, Ink Saver Main and Ink Saver Sub are two heavily debated ones, even in the Ink Academy channel. People often ask which they should use, and personally, like I said, I don't use either of them too much. But to get a sort of numbers for everyone, I went and tested a bunch of stuff, and I will be putting up a graphic on stream now to show you the numbers that I came out with. So basically there's not too much usefulness behind either of them. You can get a decent amount of flicks out of using Ink Saver Main, however you're a weapon that's going to kill in three to four flicks anyway, so trying to stack way too much to have a lot more flicks isn't even really that useful. You're just something that's going to kill pretty quickly anyway, and having a base of 32 flicks per tank is actually insane already. It's something that's very ink efficient, so you don't really need Ink Saver Main to begin with. As for Ink Saver Sub, you can get a decent amount of flicks after throwing an auto bomb with a base number of nine. That's not too bad, as that's probably that's enough to kill two people after throwing an auto bomb. And what really hurts the auto bomb on the Octobrush is the fact that auto bomb has a pretty long recovery lag meaning there's a time between when you throw an auto bomb and when you can recover ink afterwards that's what really hurts it and you can only get a maximum of 15 flicks after throwing an auto bomb and for those that are curious because I made a video back in Splatoon 1 about how I used double splat bomb Octobrush Nouveau the double bomb can theoretically return for auto bomb however it requires much more investment Back in Splatoon 1, it required 2 mains and 6 subs for double splat bomb. Here it requires 2 mains and 9 subs for double auto bomb. And while that may not seem like too big of a difference, that only gives you 1 main or 3 subs to work with afterwards. And even that, if you use double auto bomb, you actually don't even get a full flick afterwards. You don't actually get a full swing. And even if you use 3 mains and 9 subs of Ink Saver Sub, you still don't even get a full swing after throwing both auto bombs. So even a double auto bomb build in this game isn't even worth investing into. So I personally don't even really see the value in having either Ink Saver Main or Ink Saver Sub, at least too much of it. I did test single sub numbers and it's because a lot of the community has sort of shifted into trying to maximize usefulness out of a little amount. So people have started to use one sub of something to see how much usefulness they can get out of it. And it does a decent amount for the Octobrush. Brush. One sub of Ink Saver Main gives you another full flick, and one sub of Ink Saver Sub gives you one full flick after throwing an auto bomb. So it's at least decent to use, and probably that would be the ideal amount to use, just a single sub. However, in general, I don't really see the usefulness of Ink Saver Sub and Ink Saver Main as primary uses. Ink Saver Main, because the weapon is already ink efficient, and you're already going to get a decent amount of kills out of having none of it. Ink Saver Sub, it isn't the fact that the auto bomb costs so much that hurts it, it's the fact that it has a lot of recovery lag. That's what really hurts it. And allowing you to get one extra flick from just one sub is probably the best that you should go for. Alright, so now I think it's time I finally talk about Ink Recovery Up and why I use that instead of Ink Saver Main or Ink Saver Sub. And the primary reason is simply because it helps with the recovery lag from the auto bombs. This is something I primarily use only on the vanilla Octobrush because of the ink recovery lag. The auto bomb has nearly two seconds of recovery lag, meaning for nearly two seconds you actually can't recover ink after throwing an auto bomb. 
This leaves you with a point in time where you can't actually recover ink. And while ink recovery up doesn't lower that amount of time in the recovery lag, it does actually make it so much faster when you do get that time back and you can start to recover ink quickly. The reason why I do it primarily over anything else is because I'm not trying to lower the cost of something. I'm not trying to make auto bombs cheaper to throw out or make my Octo Rush get more flicks out of it. The point is that I'm trying to work towards both of them. Ink Recovery Up helps both the sub and the main ability by allowing you to get back every ink you spend really quickly. You can spend so much to be able to throw a double auto bomb or you can have a bunch of ink recovery and make it to where you throw an auto bomb, and then that two seconds later you probably already have enough ink to throw another auto bomb. You're spending less abil less abilities to get pretty much the same effects. You can spend you know a bunch of inks they remain to get a bunch of flicks, or you can spend your 32 flicks and then swim for a second and then have enough ink back already to flick like say 10 more times or whatever. I'm not trying to dedicate one ability to one side of the weapon when I can have one ability that assists both sides of the weapon. And that's why I use Ink Recovery Up instead of Ink Saver Sub or Ink Saver Main. It's because it affects both. It affects the sub and the main ability, and that's what I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for something that helps both of them, rather than having to stack two separate abilities that will individually assist one, but not, as, not basically assist the other. It's just a better... It, I feel like Ink Recovery Up is a better way to focus on having efficiency for both rather than trying to build for efficiency over one. Now with all of that out of the way, we're down to just a few abilities left and I'm going to dedicate this final part of this video talking about each of those. And I'm not really going to focus too much on them as either some of these are very obvious as to why you'd want to have them and there's some of them that there's just sort of not really too much behind why I feel you should or shouldn't use them. So with that, let's just quickly blaze through the last few abilities so we can just finally wrap up this video. First up, we have Bomb Defense Up, and this is something that affects a lot of things in this game. A lot of, peop a lot of people don't realize this actually affects pretty much every special weapon in this game. Any special that has a projectile, like the inkjet or the tenor missiles, is classified as a bomb. So the Bomb Defense allows you to reduce the damage taken from certain specials. I feel like... A lot of people don't quite understand that. It's not actually, I don't think it's stated in the game's description. It just says it saves you from bombs, which most people expect to be subs. But yeah, it's actually something very useful. There's actually, oddly enough, this is one of the first ones where people realize that just using one sub of it makes a huge difference. And using one sub of bomb defense up allows a lot of bombs' indirect damage to not break ink armor. It makes it to where bomb indirect damage, which normally does 30 damage, it'll do less than 30 damage, and as I mentioned earlier in this video, ink armor takes 30 damage to break, so this lone sub allows your armor to last a little bit longer. So this is primarily something that you would want to have at least one sub of, and maybe a little bit more depending on the opponent you're playing against. If someone uses inkjet a lot, you'll want more, yada yada yada. It's definitely something you should probably have at least one sub of in your build somewhere if you're running an ink armor team. Otherwise, it's just sort of there, and I wouldn't really bother too much with it, aside from one sub of it. We have Cold-Blooded, which is, this is something that is just all around not useful at all. There's not really too many things in this game that will mark you and show your position off to anybody anymore. The only thing that this would be useful for is the fact that it actually does somewhat affect Stingray. So Stingray provides the outline to the person using it. Cold-Blooded actually makes it harder for someone in a Stingray to see you. Otherwise, there's no real point in using Cold-Blooded, as Echolocator from the first game doesn't exist. There's little to no weapons that you'll see with Point Sensor, so there's really no use of using Cold-Blooded, so I don't think it's even worth it. Ink Resistance Up. This was something that was really big and really common in the first game. However, because they shifted away from being a main exclusive and now something you can stack, it's, it's a little bit weaker. It's actually significantly weaker, and they just don't really see any use. It's just not good anymore. It's not really that useful for the Octorush. The most it'll be useful for is if you use a bunch of it and you roll around using the brush. That's what it's useful for, mostly for right turns because that that's where you'll get stuck in ink most likely. However, ink resistance up in general just isn't useful anymore, and you have to stack a decent amount of it to see any real use. It's not one of those abilities where one sub is good enough and will carry you along like bomb defense. This is something where you'd have to have like a main and three subs of it to see any real use, and at that point, 
I feel like that's way too much dedication to something that used to just be one main. So I definitely do not recommend Ink Resistance Up, primarily because the usefulness of it for this weapon isn't really that common. You're not going to be rolling around all that often, and if you are, then maybe you should use it, but I don't see any real use to it. Quick respawn. One of the most controversial abilities from the first game returns, but now it's different. Now it doesn't give you the effect if you kill people. This is a weapon that it's very dependent on how the enemy team plays. That it's going to decide whether or not you're going to be dying a lot or you're just going to be killing a lot. It's one of those abilities that you should probably use just in case. But if it's going to be a match where you're going to stomp and easily kill a bunch of people and not die so often, then you're devoting an ability towards something that's not going to happen. Kind of like with Respawn Punisher. It's definitely an overall decent choice as something that is close range, you're most likely going to die a fair amount, so Quick Respawn is good. However, if you find yourself killing more often than you die, then it's not really that going to be useful for you. And we have Quick Super Jump, which... This is something I mentioned earlier with the sub power up. I actually don't think you should be using quick super jump if you're using the Octobrush Nouveau. There you should be using sub power up to provide that effect to your entire team. Quick super jump you could use on the vanilla Octobrush if you're just trying to jump to teammates. However, if you're using the Nouveau, I suggest, I highly suggest just using sub power up and not quick super jump. It's also not really something that's too useful, but it is one of those abilities that does see a significant change from only using one sub of it. And here I'm going to talk about these two very briefly, Special Charge Up and Special Saver. Both of these aren't really that useful entirely, just in all, in all honesty they're not that useful. Special Charge, there's near, there isn't really too many specials in this game aside from Stingray that you would want to constantly output. Maybe a Bomb Rush, but I really don't see the use in trying to use Special Charge Up to output Tena Missiles or Inkjet. There's just no real need. And plus, the Octobrushes are both weapons that have a relatively low cost for the special to begin with, and it's something you're already going to get out pretty decently, so Special Charge isn't really that useful. Special Saver, they're both abilities that you really don't need out of spawn. Again, Stingray would be. So there isn't really too much usefulness behind Special Charge and Special Saver, I feel, for both the Octobrushes, as their specials are things you don't need to have immediately, or things you don't need out of spawn immediately. Now a special power up, this I, I really recommend special power up for Octobrush Nouveau because it makes the reticle for the missiles bigger. And the bigger the reticle is, the more people you'll catch with it. As for the inkjet, it increases the blast radius of the shots and be, can be pretty good for picking people off with the indirect shots or for covering paint. So it is useful for inkjet and I actually would recommend at least a main of it for inkjet if that's your thing. If you're good with inkjet, I would suggest having it. If you're like me, that's not the greatest at it. You probably shouldn't be devoting an ability towards it, especially because it also increases the duration of it. And if you're like me, that's not the greatest at inkjet, you probably don't want to spend too much time in it anyway. And then finally, something that I really shouldn't explain why you should use it, and it's swim speed up. It's just one of those things that you should always have on. Any weapon benefits from it. There's no reason not to use Swim Speed Up. It's probably one of the best abilities in the game. And there's just no reason not to use it. It helps a weapon like this so much where you have to close the gap on things that have range or are far away from you. So if you aren't using Swim Speed Up, then I don't know what you're doing. You probably should have it. And you should always have it on just about anything. And the Octobrush and Inkbrush are no different. And so with all that, that is my stance on the abilities for Octobrush and somewhat Inkbrush. This, like I mentioned, has been something that's been talked about a lot in the Academy, and oftentimes on my streams people ask me to explain my builds and the abilities I use. So I figured it would finally be time for me to make this video so people can reference it, and instead of having to constantly correct people or provide information, they can simply refer to this video, and if they see it, then they will know what is and isn't good. And again, this can be cross-referenced. If you have a friend that might not know of something or is trying to debate an ability of whether or not it's good, you can link them to this video and they will get that information. So yeah, that's pretty much it, and that's all I wanted to talk about. So I want to thank everyone for watching, and I will see you all next time.